woman looks at me and she went, that's abysmal. I said, it gets bigger. <laughs> but this, uh, this cold weather's doing my head, doing my head in. All this snow we've been having. I actually made a snowman the other day, and it came to life. But it didn't take me flying over the sea to the North Pole to visit Father Christmas, like in the film. No. No, it put an explosive inside the leather sphere that I used to kick around as a child. It was abominable. <laughs> One solitary clap. It's, it's not going to get any better. <laughs> so I thought, I thought, sod this, I'll go and see that new shopping centre that's just opened. But on the way I thought, you know what, you've seen one shopping centre, you've seen them all. I'll go to the Natural History Museum instead. <laughs> and on the way there, I bumped into my friend Jerome. And Jerome can be a bit aggressive, but uh, he is actually descended from the inventor of the light bulb. So if you piss him off, he will give you a taste of Jerome medicine. <laughs> <laughs> he's, actually, uh, he's actually writing a book about star signs. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't believe in star signs. Because I hate rap music. But I was born under the sign of the twin rappers, Gemini. <laughs> Mind you, he doesn't eat meat and he's vegetarian. <laughs> but if any of you are thinking of writing a book and you put a little star at the end of a sentence in the hope that people will jump down to the bottom of the page and read a footnote, there's a chance that they might not. That's the risk you take. <laughs> And since he's been writing, writing this book, Jerome started asking me all these weird questions. And the other day he asked me, how do you get water out of the ground? I said, well... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, then he said uh, why is it fair to punish people just because they've, gone, just because they've done wrong? I said... Just is. <laughs> Apparently he wants to uh, interview a famous comedian for this book. And I didn't want to disappoint him, because I'm neither. So uh, I pointed at my anorak, and I pointed at the wheel of his car, and I said, well, here he is. It's Michael Mack and Tyre. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's actually an inventor, just like his great, 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 great granddad. Um, and uh, he's, uh, he's recently, well, he's almost perfected invisible hot bread. But you mustn't tell anyone, because you never know who's listening. Wait until the toast is clear. <laughs> <laughs> some, of his, uh, some of his inventions give me the creeps. Uh, I don't know about you guys. But the thought of crossbreeding rabbits and meerkats makes my hair stand on end. <laughs> yeah, it never gets a laugh as well. <laughs> People actually tell me I don't put enough effort into this. And I tell them, Revo Ganidneb, and that's bending over backwards. <laughs> so I was playing Scrabble the other day, and uh, I got the letters H-E-D and T-A-L. I couldn't make head nor tail of it. <laughs> so I finally, uh, I finally got to the, uh, to the Natural History Museum, and I said to the woman, who can I ask about dinosaurs? She said, try Sarah Tops. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, who can I ask about dinosaurs? And she said, Professor Taylor, room five. <laughs> Broken irons. They get a bad press. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into the new stuff now and I can't fucking read it. <laughs> my, uh, my girlfriend's got a porcelain minge. <laughs> or as I call it, a vagina. <laughs> Spanish dancers, they don't look anything like flamingos. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be in bed tonight and suddenly you're like, oh, I see. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> you, you never see Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson at the same time, do you? 
<laughs> anymore. <laughs> so I went to the art gallery after the, after the museum, and uh, there was a guy scrubbing one of the paintings with a toothbrush. So I went on and said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm just cleaning Matisse. <laughs> uh, I see uh, Chris Rea has, uh, has launched his own brand of margarine in direct competition with uh, I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. It's called Fool If You Think It's Clover. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I got, when I got home, uh, I, my girlfriend was there and she had kind of had this red, like, gunky stuff, like, streaming down her cheeks. <laughs> I said, well, what the, what the hell's up with you? Where are your glasses? And she said, oh, the, uh, I went to the opticians. He advised me to try contact lenses. <laughs> well, I'm definitely never doing that one again. <laughs> <laughs> Flat pack furniture. That's a good idea. <laughs> well, I never give money to Amnet. <laughs> oh, I nearly fucked that one then. <laughs> I never give money to Amnesty International. Not if they am nasty. <laughs> Pathetic, isn't it? Child, uh, child can write that. There's a... Uh, I see the, uh, the... The sea level has fallen by a mile. And that's just a drop in the ocean. I've got the best gas leak. You can't hold a candle to it. Or if he, what I meant to say was you can't hold a candle to it. <laughs> what I actually said was... <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Um, in Star Trek, Captain Kirk can always tell who the evil Vulcan is because he's got a beard. Should have gone to Spock Shavers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not to mention. <laughs> So apparently, sometimes on telly, a guy, or a man, a man or a woman, sits behind a desk and tells us what's happening in the world. It's news to me. <laughs> my, uh, my friend was going to go to Australia, but he's scared of wild dogs. So he didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> so literally anyone can do this. All you need is a dictionary. <laughs> I'll leave you with this one final thought. Oh, thank God he's going. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you sleep with two other people, that's a menage artois. If you drink French beer, that's a stellar artois. And if you kill three members of a Swedish pop group in a meat factory, that's an abattoir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the journey to the